evening, everyone. I call to order the meeting of the Open Source Voting System Technical Advisory Committee of the San Francisco Elections Commission. Today is Thursday, January 18th, 2018, and the time is now 6.07 p.m. I'm the chair, Chris Giordano. Secretary Chan, can you take the roll? Uh, chair, Chris Giordano. Here. Uh, Member Carl Haig. Here. Member Ron Patal. Here. Member Tony Wasserman has not arrived, and Larry, uh, Member Larry Belfondo is not here. Okay, so uh, Member Wasserman said that he will be arriving shortly. He's uh, stuck in traffic. And Member Buffendo is um, uh, not feeling well, so he won't be here today. Okay. Um, Item two. Yes. Item two, general public comment. Public comment on any issue within the committee's general jurisdiction that is not covered by another item on this agenda. Uh, sure, welcome to um, I was in Sacramento last Friday <coughs> lobbying for risk limiting audits and open source development, trying to get money <coughs> out of the bottom of the pit there. And it seems that 8668, which was the $450 million bond bill last year, stalled. <coughs> I was talking to people who know things uh, because the government doesn't make bonds. Uh, last week there appeared in his Governor's budget, a $134 million line item to get new equipment, election equipment on a one to one election basis. And I encourage the commission, anybody, to dig out more information because, uh, as I can tell, this is going to be handed out first come, first serve basis. The economy's going to be diving in there. San Francisco, they want to have matching funds for a development project. We'll need to have those funds sort of, what do they call it, shovel ready, ready to go, uh, so they can go to the secretary's office and say, here, we want matching funds. So I'm encouraging whomever to start working on that and finding out what the process is. That's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Silver. I mean, one other comment, if I dress like that, I tend to say that uh, my jeans are in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Silver, can I just ask you, do you, do you know offhand if, if those funds are going to be made, of, made available to development projects, or is it only for a purchase? It appears so. Uh, I saw a Darren Chesson screening paragraph, and I could not dig it up. Item. And it just sort of for election systems. And I said, well, what about the amendments that were made last year? And he thought that if they were needed, they would be put in. But again, we need other kids to go to the governor's office, to the budget committee, and the subcommittees are committees for general government, general government, to, if needed, make sure they're in it. I was trying to argue. Also, it's advocating for money that could be shared across all companies. Like whatever software is produced could likely be made such that uh, all the other counties in California oh, might be able to use it. We're trying to. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. So thank you. So uh, next item. Item three. Approval of minutes of previous meeting. Discussion and possible action to approve minutes for the December 14, 2017 committee meeting. Okay, so thank you again, uh, Secretary Chan. Great job. We've got uh, Libre, Libre Planet is spelled correctly, as well as scale. So I've, I've already had a chance to read this, and I, I don't have anything that, um, would people like more time? I, I scanned it, and it looked fine to me. I also scanned it quickly, and it looked okay to me. 
Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Okay. Is okay. there any public comment on the minutes? I made it on the board. It looks good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the discussion before we vote, seeing none, Secretary Chan. Chair Giordano? Yes. Uh, Member Haig? Yes. Member Katal? Yes. Uh, it passes with a vote of three to zero. Okay, great. Uh, next item. Uh, item number four, member reports. Member reports on committee-related activities not covered by another item on this agenda, including but not limited to the last election committee meeting, <coughs> Department of Elections progress, research finding, and news reports. Okay, so I'll report a few things. Let's see. Uh, so the, our, the report that we approved was submitted to the Elections Commission. I emailed that on January 5th. We should all have, should have received a copy of that. It was part of yesterday's agenda packet. And unfortunately, no one showed up from TAC to the meeting. And I think it's partly my fault because I didn't send a reminder to Larry earlier. And then I think Secretary Chan was not able to he, he was going to see if he could find a backup. He, he tried. He tried. He called me several times, but I was too busy to okay. look at who that was until after, and then it was already too late. Yeah. So, um, but the report at least was a part of the packet. And um, the other thing I want to mention is I'm going to be speaking at a couple events next week about the open source voting project. One is an event on Wednesday at six called. Um, it's at this company called Exigy and the Mission. And it's, I'm just going to be giving a 10 minute talk, but it's about open source and government. And then on Friday next week, there's an event at UC, UC Hastings. So I think that's, um, yeah, it's mentioned in the minutes here. So, and then I, the other thing I want to mention is that I'm, I had a chance to meet with Slalom a couple weeks ago, and I, I also have a chance to review their, um, their report or like a draft version of the report that they're going to be finalizing for next week. So um, that's all I have to report. Um, so anyone else? Oh, yeah, one thing, uh, I remember, Haig, um, on your patches, what I would suggest is maybe, um, I'll kind of leave it to you to figure out which agenda item your various suggestions fall under. Oh, okay. And then, and then if anything doesn't fall under one of the agenda items, you could you could like discuss that. The so time. the proposed changes, what would be the best uh, section? Well, whatever whatever topic areas. I mean, there might be multiple topic areas. <coughs> so, um, like I know you had some of your changes are on the glossary, right? And that would go under agenda item number six. Oh, I see. But. Um, all I'm saying is that you don't, you don't, I put your items under this. Under four. But you don't need to discuss them now. We can discuss them under the right number. Oh, I see. Uh, well, there's sort of two things. One, the recommendations document and the glossary. And then there's some references, whichever. Okay. So why don't, what we could do is during each item, when it, when it makes sense, we could we could bring that up. Okay, so. but uh, I guess I'll mention one thing. Um, one of the, some of the links that I proposed added, added. One of them, the Secretary of State, they have a notices to election officials, and one of them is uh, a digest that just came out, and it's basically a summary of all the election laws, of all the things that election officials need to know, and what you. So I think it's it's good reading. It has a glossary. A lot of important terms, um, and that, so another announcement was with this remote vote by mail, and some of the laws related to that. So I added that. That's one of the things. But anyway, I would recommend looking that document over because uh, I there's a bunch of stuff in it that's relevant. Do you know what the the state's glossary is licensed under? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's California code, though. Okay. Oh, it so is. it's, uh, like well, no, it's copyrighted, and that was a big problem. Because you had to, it wasn't online, and, and you had to buy it. <laughs> Only one v vendor, the legislative data center, sold it to a private printer, and everybody had to buy it from them. So, I, okay. so but 
Okay. Um, so, is there any other any other things people want to report on? Um, I'll report that um, over the over the holidays, um, I got my talk accepted at Leader Planet, so I'll be going. That will be on um, March twenty fourth or fifth, if memory serves. Great. Whatever the Saturday and Sunday around there are. Uh, so I've indicated that um, and I'll accept our invitation, and now I actually have to go and uh, write the talk. So I hope to have done that by the next meeting. Um, I was going to start before this meeting, but then I got back to the country and immediately got sick. Don't get the flu. Um, and further, over the holidays, because I wanted to do some light reading, I read the poll worker handbook for the most recent November election, which is uh, quite informative as to sort of how things actually work at the polling place. You read the San Francisco one? Yeah, the San Francisco yeah. one, yeah. Did anything jump out at you? I mean, not really. There is a. There's a machine that voters feed ballots into card by card. I guess what jumped out at me is that the ballot is split up in cards and they're just like separated and are fed in separately, but it makes complete sense because there's different contacts, different contests in every card and it doesn't, you don't, you don't actually need to and probably shouldn't link together the different pieces of the same voters ballot. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that that's separated surprised me and then I didn't realize why I was even really surprised. Um, and then, you know, there's some documentation in there for the poll worker about like when the, um, when the machine gives his error, this is what that means, this is what you should ask the voter to check, that kind of thing. Like, you know, this means it thinks there's an overvote, this means it thinks there's an undervote, that kind of thing. So I looked at the videos a while ago, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's the same, same, same thing. Same content, The videos are also quite good. Yeah, I think it, it might be worth, have you ever looked into whether you can be a poll worker? Um, I sure. signed up to be one, so I hope so. Okay, great. Yeah, that's something. Uh, have you ever been a poll worker? Uh, no. No? Something to consider. Yeah. I work, usually work on the back end. Oh, well, uh, it's worth it's worth doing at least once. Yeah. yeah. Just to see what. Yeah, I, I signed up to The project I'm working on, they typically support about 20 counties in California on election day. Oh, so I'm busy writing I you. result scanners because people don't produce their results in a computer readable fashion. I see. Okay, so let's take public comment and say no. None? Okay. Anything else? Okay, then let's move on. Item five, administration. Discussion and possible action regarding administrative issues, including but not limited to, attendance at election commission meetings by committee members, the committee's website, and the committee's written report to the commission. Okay, so on this one, so do we have a, a date for our next meeting? Yes, now you are scheduled for the rest of the year, unless changes happen, to the second Thursday of each month. Okay. So for February, that would be February the 8th. Okay. And then how about um, the, the person who's going to attend the next commission meeting? Did we decide on that? Um, Member Washman said that he could be available, but he hasn't been assigned. Okay, that's right. Um, okay, let me let me see. So, did we have someone else that we we're gonna um, have instead of him? When is the next uh, commission meeting? February the eighth. Oh, February the. Uh, I'm sorry. No, like fourteenth or something. No, it's February eighth. Uh, no, for the meeting. commission. Oh, commission meeting. Sorry. Uh, February the twenty-first. Okay. Um, I'm probably available. But hold on a second. So the next meeting for us is the eighth. Eighth. Here in room four twenty-one. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Let's please confirm this room for the rest of the year. So it's February 14th? Mm -hmm. uh, 21st for the commission. Oh, right. I see. Cause, mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, because then, of course, the third Wednesday is. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there, there is no. Yeah. Yep. So the first Wednesday is followed by the second Thursday. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, 
Wednesday the 21st. I can do it if need be. Okay, well, then whenever Watchman arrives, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it'll be one of the two of you then for that day. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, just a couple of things about the website is for the last um, changes that we incorporated into the document, I started um, adding in like the annotations we talked about where I said like edited at this meeting. And then so that's done for the last meeting. What, what we could do is going forward, we <coughs> just kind of do that. <coughs> so so it, is that something that appears on the page? Yeah, it's part of the text. Okay. And then I think over time we can, I can kind of like go back and and do previous ones for them. It's not something that people should have to worry about when they're preparing things, but it's going to make it easier for people to see what what they've um, what's new. And um, another thing is just kind of on the and Carl, you might want to talk about this after I'm done stating it. But I um, we have a repository that houses our um, you know the source files for recommendations. And what I did was I, I separated out into a separate repository the, um, the code for building those files and also for storing the build files. And that's what actually gets published to our website. And the advantage of doing it this way is it keeps the source file repo very simple. And um, it's the, the history isn't cluttered with all these changes that don't have anything to do with the actual content. So. Um, and then Carl, you, you said you, you were the first one that I think tried to actually build a site just from the documentation there. <laughs> yeah. And um, you, you had some complaints or, or something. Like that. Right, so I mean, or some I mean, well first I was really impressed with the documentation was that there, so that was really helpful. Um, so, but I think it would be nice to have some sort of way to, you know, I, I mean, I, it doesn't matter if I check out the site repo and the, the other one, I'm, I'm issue, you know, that's not an issue, but I need to be able to preview the changes I'm making or like run one command to transfer all of my working documents into the site area, you know, to, to build it. So if we had a script to do that, like, build remote or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Although, you know, I notice uh, Jekyll, like, recognizes any time I save a file and it'll, you know, re re you know do an update. So um, it's actually kind of a nice feature because you can just have that in your, uh, in your web browser and then s see it, you know. I think you still have to click refresh on the browser. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> That's, I guess, like another reason to, to build it. I don't, I'm not sure how much other stuff, I mean, even if it's like a command to copy files or, or something, yeah. there's, I don't know what the best way to so, do it, or or create another way with sim links or something. Well, so, so what I can do is, uh, what I'm planning to do is just write kind of a step-by-step, -step more kind of like the workflow, like what you do if you want to be working on it while you're previewing it, and I think that will kind of address that, your, Yeah. Exactly. So, and it, it won't require any kind of symlinks or anything. I mean, I'm just saying okay. symlink might be a good way to handle it if you want to have like build stuff in a another place, or at least you know to be able to link to the live. Yeah. It, it's, so it's, like uh, the pages possible. subdirectory or whatever, if that somehow. I mean, if, instead of having a copy of it, it could just be a symlink. But I mean, you can. You it understand is, everything, and so yeah, you can well, why just why don't you, why don't, I'll write it up, and then you can try it out, and then let me know if Sounds it's... Sounds good. Okay. okay. Yeah, the other suggestion I had was, uh, I, I found out I had to install a new Python, because Chris used some features that are later than what's in the current long-term support release. Uh -huh. So, uh, I just thought it's good as a policy to... Uh, be behind a little bit in terms of features, unless there's a good reason. Okay. 
Um, did you want to discuss that at all, or, or did you just? Uh, well, I guess I was thinking of even making a recommendation to the, um, you know, for our recommendations for this, our open source software, but I'm not sure about that because we have to make a build environment anyway. Yeah, I don't know. So it may not, it's not that. quite as much an issue, but yet anytime people do open source, if they're always on the bleeding edge, then you get into these compatibility issues. So, so what, what the issue that Carl's describing is, um, it's like whether should you, to what extent should you be able to rely on the system installed versions of things under kind of like the latest operating system versus having to install a newer version, even if the newer version is open source and can mm -hmm. be installed on the system. I mean, actually, the, uh, there's a problem with uh, open count as well, that you have to go to get like a developer's version of open CV and install it. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it is, it's, I think it's an interesting question more broadly. Um, I mean, personally, I think the convenience is one issue that's kind of separate, but in terms, but, but philosophically, it seems like if something's open source and it it's, it can be installed and there's instructions, then I don't think that should be ruled out. But, um, yeah, I think that would be okay. It. I mean, for for things like build scripts, it's probably annoying if you have to install a, a new version of Python that's not available in your Pax running system just to run a build script. But like yeah, for an entire application like that, that where like the primary purpose of your device is to run that application, and sure you can install whatever version of Python you need, or whatever version of whatever you need. I know. I just remember trying to get a uh, shopping cart system, a website system, and it was really complex because it had lots of layers of different libraries, mm -hmm. and you know I could never get one to work right. because it was either too far ahead or too far behind, and it you know and. People, you know, violate backwards compatibility when they mm -hmm. make upgrades to software, and so it gets, it can get a nightmare. So, just in principle, I value, I think, backwards compatibility to some extent is is a is a is a good thing to have, to you know, to a certain extent. Okay. Well, so what I'll do is I'll make I'll make the build script, so you can use Python three point five. It's very easy, and then. Um, just I'll document that. Okay. Just make it a little easier. Yeah. Okay. So, um, are there any any um, administrative things that anyone else can think of? I did. I did also post the bios on our website. I don't know if you all mm. had a chance to see those. I owe you one. Story. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, public comment. Nothing said. Okay. So, anything else before we move on? Okay. Well, let's move on. Secretary Chen. Item six: Project background and terminology. Discussion and possible action regarding project background and terminology, including other voting system projects. Okay. So, yeah, something I should have said earlier is that we don't have a lot of submissions for today. Um, Carl gave me couple things last yesterday evening and that were posted on our website today and Tony uh, sent one thing but um, I also gave you another thing today right but they're they're both included in here. Okay. so Carl are any of the things you submitted would fall under background and terminology? yes okay do you want to so, walk us through that yeah so uh, let me find the right page um, so I just did a diff with Git, and so it kind of mixes them up. But uh, there's two things um, of interest. One is the glossary, which is on page three. Well, there's a which document? Oh, well, it's the first one okay. here under diff ch 181701. OK. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's uh, the glossary. So I, I added, well, one of the main things was I uh, kind of simplified the, there's a legal definite definition of remote accessible by vote by mail. 
and a legal definition of paper cast vote record mm -hmm. and a legal definition of voter verified paper audit trail. So these are kind of copied from the California code definitions. Okay, so let's, let's so if you need to make sure we don't have copyright issues, I can rephrase them. Well, so let's let's um, let's let's kind of take this in pieces so we know what we're looking at. So let's um, first let's let's just consider the glossary suggestions for that's okay. what I'm. Yeah. That's on page three. So yeah. So how do people? So how do we approach the copyright issue? You said you copied this from which document? Uh, it's it's copied from a document that's copied from the California Code. Okay. I have no idea what the copyright status is of laws in California. Well, what do you think we should do? do or or reference it, quote it. Yeah. A fair use type thing. Yeah, that would be okay. Yeah, later. So I could put in a link to the. Uh, I can try to put a link to the code section. Which is, mm -hmm. just, sure I would just use actual quotes and just afterwards. Or, yeah, and just link. state the, the number of the code and stuff. Okay. Yeah, where it's from. I mean, I think for remote accessible vote by mail system, I simplify the wording a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you added ballot, you added ballot type. I added ballot type use. because I know we're going to need that. Okay. And, to discuss, and we reference it elsewhere. Um, I just put placeholders for ballot and <coughs> ballot type. We may wish to add ballot card as well. It's a term that I saw up here in the um, poll worker manual. Uh, actually, they, they're kind of changing the terminology a little oh, bit. Oh, are you changing that word? <coughs> what is it? A ballot card? But apparently, but Carl says they're changing the terminology. Did, but it's worth it? putting in there anyway because you'll see it. What, what is being changed? Uh, I know they made some edits to the regulations where they crossed out the word card and, and inserted uh, stock, or I don't remember now. Okay. It's one of those uh, notices to you know, elected officials where they said, oh, we're making this change right. on ballot printing regulations and all that. So mm. I guess they're you know, trying to get away from the idea that it was like the punch card to be right. a little more flexible. but. They use the word like ballot stock, ballot card, you know, ballot sheet. Right. They're all kind of yeah interchangeable. It's, it's really just like a page of the ballot. A detachable. Well, also sometimes like a, so. Next time I'll try to fill in some proposals mm -hmm. for the glossary. Can I? Can you just ask, so the paper cast for record, like we're not. I mean, in the system that we're considering, we're not going to need one of those, right? I mean, so. That's why I thought it was interesting to put this in because okay. if you look at LA's ballot, the legal definition of that is a paper cast vote record. So, the, and that's why I also put in ballot because it says it is not a ballot. So what it is, it's the list of contests and the selection that you have. So mm -hmm. a ballot is the list of contests and all the choices available. Yeah. So that's the distinction. So and. So I put that in there, paper cast vote record, because that's essentially the output of a electronic voting machine or a, a, a disability access mm -hmm. voting system. So you're saying that by by which by which laws is, is that not about? That's 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 a definition of that kind of printout that exists in. So it could be a part of a voter verified paper trail, okay. But it's uh, essentially just the um, it's the it's list great. of contests and only the choices that the voter made, you know, to verify that what they cast is correct. Okay. All right. So just for the audio, it's um, Member Wasserman arrived at six thirty-six p.m. during agenda item number six. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, I would have been half an hour earlier if it were not for this weather. Yeah. <laughs> two, uh, two hours from Mountain View to Glen Park. Oh, so we're discussing the I glossary think. changes on page three. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's, I didn't really add any other ones other than, than those, but I thought it was useful to use the same definition that the uh, Secretary of State uses. 
Okay. Um, does anyone have any suggestions on that language before we, before Carl goes to the other languages? Or should I make it a quote with attribution? I think it would be good. Yeah, I, I think we've stated that. <coughs> okay. Um, the other thing I have on the same topic, uh, I added uh, some links. Mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, let's see. <coughs> okay, so um, on th section 344 at the bottom of page one. Uh, so I added uh, a section, other open source voting projects we had an existing section, but it seemed to be tied to election departments that were using it. So this is, I just added a new section to not be clear. Um, so there's two, two um, projects that seem to be referenced a lot. Uh, one's called P-Vote, um, which is kind of interesting. The idea was you know, it's P-Vote because it's implemented in Python, but it's only for 430 lines or something like that of Python, 460 lines of Python. And so it's an, it's an example where they really reduced the amount of sensitive code. So a lot of it's in data preparation. And then another one is VoteBox. Um, although it's, it's kind of uh, complex. And then I added other two other links. One is the low air voting interface, and that's used by Prime3. And I sort of propose to strike the last one on, uh, it's uh, basically on um, digital ballot presentations for uh, accessibility, but I think it's maybe too low level of a thing to add. Okay, so you want to strike out and make the voting accessible one? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask, like, what does the keyboard actually do? I mean, oh, it does similar to what the other ones did create cast vote records. I mean, but it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't do like ballot layout. It doesn't. Have, does it have like image recognition where it'll scan it? No, it's or? it's a application that runs on Cots Harbor where you make choices and it it prints out uh, a ballot. Oh, it prints it out. It's, it's like Prime Three kind of. Okay. Well, I mean, that's what Prime Three. You go in. So it's kind of like a remote accessible open mail system. Kind of. It's in that genre. Okay. Um, um, oh, and else. the other thing was under OSET, they they have a like demonstration project. So I added a link to that, and it's just for displaying election results. And I also added a reference. There's a technical paper. Um, that is very good because it um, it's a very good description of how you use Cots Harbor hardware in the whole whole precinct based voting system. Okay. Um, and then I added uh, the links to uh, that I mentioned before the advisories to county election officials and the election officers digest. So, um, is this all back uh, well, there's a description of the sections of the software. I don't know if that's background or. Yeah, well, I guess you could use whatever section already existed. I don't know if that's equipment decisions and implementation plan or. Well, so, I mean, I'm looking at page one. I'm looking at page one. That's background, so. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> Okay, so, uh, so one thing, uh, let's see. Oh, just in terms of hardware, you talked about you're defining hardware. 
I just made a note that in a remote accessible vote by mail system, it's the uh, voters' hardware. Okay. Um, and then on, I also added something on central ballot scanner that it might be used to scan remote accessible vote by mail ballots. That might and, and so those might be different than the normal hand marked ballots. Um, so, oh, I think these were the just general requirements. Okay, so then, okay, so then everything from sec page four, four on, we can we can do that under the agenda item where it talks about decisions and. Okay, and then there's a whole other, let's see. There's a, the decisions are on a different document at the end. Yeah, so we'll, we'll cover that under agenda item number eight. Okay, good. So is there anything else under what we consider background and terminology? I think that's okay. it. Okay, does anyone have any um, other edits that you think to Carl's language before we take a vote? Just in the portions that he's discussed. <clears throat> that was fine to me. I feel like there might have been a link to the Usenix thing somewhere. It's, it doesn't. Oh, there's actually a, a couple. One. There's a, a, like three, three, three. No, there was another one that I was going to add that was already there. No, I mean I, I think we already we have elsewhere in the document a link to the Usenix. Yeah, it's a different one. Oh, it's a different one. All right, um, does anyone want to take a motion? Do a motion on this, these changes? I'll move that we accept the changes to, um, sounds like it's all the changes to the glossary and all the changes to background, right? And yes. links, yeah. I um, mean, the, f the files, the glossary and background. Yeah. Is That's all we discussed. So like the first three and a half pages or right. three and a quarter pages. Right. Right there. I'll move that we accept those. I'll second. So let's take public comment on this item. What's the what's the top of the page? High at the top of the page. Div CH twenty eighteen zero one one eight. Okay, we haven't gotten there yet. No, that's up later. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So then, um, any further discussion? Seeing then Secretary Chan. Chair Judani. Yes. Uh, Member Hay. Yes. Member Vidal. Yes. Member Washington. I wasn't here for all of it. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, great. Then, yeah. So, any uh, any other things on command or project background terminology before we move on? So, I mean, I guess after this gets in and you can actually read it nicely, people might have some mm -hmm. suggestions for yes. So we can always make those. Diffs are never fun to read. Yeah. I tried to print it out, but I had some issues today. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess because this this agenda item covers other open source projects. Did you want to say a little bit of the work you were doing? Uh. Well. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Uh. So we discussed last week. I was planning to put Prime Three up on the on a website so you could play with it. But I had some. I have some server issues I have to fix. Uh, so I might have that shortly in a few days. Could I send an email announcement just to give the URL on that, or do we need to wait for the next meeting? Um, it's a really good question. Um, well, yeah, I think it should be fine. I mean, we could, we could figure it out later. Why don't you just email to me, and then I'll, I, could, I could check with the attorney if I'm not sure, but okay. it should probably be fine. So I was also thinking of uh, 
converting data from the San Francisco November of last year, or like this would be the year before, 2016, uh, just so we could see a real case. Um, I might have to make some, do it in two steps, where uh, the rank choice ones you know, might be done later. But uh, at least that, you know, when we evaluate systems, it might be nice to see what, how they look in the context of a, a sample real case. So you're mm -hmm. talking about the last election, not the upcoming one? Well, I could do the upcoming one, but we haven't got data for that yet. You might not want to do that one. <laughs> okay. Oh, you say I might not want to do that. The, the next one? I might want to do it or might not. I might not want to do the next one. Yeah, I think it would be confusing. <laughs> yeah, let's People do think, oh yeah, we haven't implemented already. Yeah, so so no, I just uh, want to do a 2016 one. And then were you also thinking about imp um, getting a, an instance of open count running? Yeah, I you know that one doesn't run on the web, so I'll get it running on my machine. But uh, oh, I do have a report on that. The um, they finally got the missing documentation from the Berkeley people and added it to their <laughs> repository. So now there's installation instructions and that's where I found out you have to download and fix the latest OpenCV for it to work. Well, it crashed in OpenCV, so. Some archeology span there, okay, good. Well, and that's also another example why we need uh, to have a build environment that we use release this the software yeah, you could have certification you could have a you could use a container right yeah mm -hmm. as long as no one deletes it <laughs> <laughs> okay so <coughs> sounds good okay so anything else before we move on okay next item Item seven, project management and procurement. Discussion of possible actions regarding project management and procurement, including topics like modular contracting, agile development and governance, and incremental approaches to the project. Okay, well I think this would be a great item to, to discuss what you submitted to me yesterday or today. So, yes, and uh, by the way, if weather permits, I am going to go to the United States Digital Service presentation tomorrow morning at uh, Stanford. Mm. Uh, there's one at 5 o'clock today here in the city, which was hopeless for me, but 9 o'clock tomorrow morning at, uh, at Stanford at the Haas School of something. Anyway, uh, that'll be an, an update because I visited them last year when uh, it was the blue team in charge. And uh, so I thought, you know, most of the people I know left. Uh, and, uh, but, but they're still alive and kicking, so I'm gonna find out how hard they're kicking. Uh, they have a new administrator and uh, so. I it, saw them at the Computer History Museum. They did a revolutionary show. I, I was, I was, I was there. Haley, Haley, Haley Van Dyke and Mikey oh, Dickerson okay. was there. I was there. Yeah, but but uh, that was the blue team. Are, is it going to be an all day thing or just? No, it's like an hour or two. Yeah. Or? Yeah. I mean, there's a. Uh, hmm. If I had access to my email, I could mail you the registration link. Uh, maybe after we adjourn this evening and I get back to a dry machine, <laughs> I can find it. Um, so, so what I wrote was really um, not intended to be completely comprehensive, but just a, um, a, um, a very brief. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, a very brief thing about the about user stories and, and agile development processes. It didn't have uh, it, just that uh, if you're going to follow an agile development process. Mo techniques like Scrum use user stories as a way to determine what is going to get implemented in a particular sprint. And so I just enumerated a, a few of the likely user stories, and that's a list that could be extended more or less indefinitely given the number of 
situations that, that we can imagine, uh, but those were instant, intended to be uh, maybe the most common ones that uh, would have to get highest priority as, as people went through the sprints. Or do we also want to consider the elections department as a, as a user? You know, I mean, in terms of things like central ballot scanning or, or well, risk limiting audits and stuff. Ah, so it's a different set of user stories, right? Because right. it's mm -hmm. a different subsystem. Right. So you could actually, yes, so, so that's a good point. You could create a set of user stories around the ballot preparation and a, and I mean, a, because if we even do this in stages, you know, we might end up doing RLA as, you know, the first deliverable. Right. Uh, so, but this was just an example yeah. of, okay, here's some user stories around user act, voter, voter activities. Mm -hmm. And so we, we could make another list for other activities. But, I mean, this can be expanded, like, you know, I think it might also be good to add that in typical practice, you would also break down these stories before you handle each within the sprint because, like, some of these are too large, for example, to, I mean, they're, yep. they're good to reason about, but they're too large to do. In, right, like, so they could sprint. be broken down yeah. in. But I, I also but think it would be good the, to explain the, the, Agile. I mean, it's, it's a buzz phrase that to uh, technical people means something different than normal people. And then, then it can also mean lots of different things depending on how people use it. But to define it and also define it in terms of stories so who's our audience for this? If the audience is a development team that's been awarded the contract, then they'll have more knowledge about and more context for Agile than if we're writing it for the public at large. Well, that's true, but then like the developer of healthcare.gov wanted to use Agile and yeah, well, and I wanted to we, plan all the sprints in advance. Uh, I think there's no reason we couldn't add a description like that. I don't think we yeah, need, I'm not need saying to a big do it thing, for this. But, but yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, 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 well and, that's a point well taken. Would this be like an, another page or something alongside recommendations document? Or? Well, we said something about Agile in the recommendations yeah, we, document well, we already. A, we have a section here around project management. But um, no, I mean, I, are, you, are you planning on making stories or just saying we should make stories? Well, well, you know, they're going to do it. I mean, whoever oh, gets okay. the whoever gets oh, the award. Oh, okay, so this is in the project management section saying yeah, we, we should recommend do stories and yeah. like such and such. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but we could always add more background around the agile if, if you know if you want to we want to define it or something. We can always do that. I, I think mean, it would be useful, like for election commission members or right project well, managers or. Chris can probably explain it to them. <laughs> or, uh, no, just so that th they have a context of yeah. uh, what it means. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the commission did pass a resolution that uses the word agile. So. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a good point. OK, so let's get I'll, I'll, I'll sign up for that. OK. Or if you, okay. I mean, if you have a link to uh, some well, I mean, website I, that, that has an appropriate Agilemanifesto.org? Well, okay. Yeah, that's very general. Yeah, that's not a very good link, no. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, let's get back to the language here. So um, does anyone have any edits they want to suggest? In, in Tony's thing? Yeah. Um, in number one, the word day is misspelled. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, the, the, the reason I mentioned breaking things down is because the, the very last sentence suggests that these would be like appropriate examples to do in one sprint each. Um, and I, I think they're not quite the right size for that. Do you want to suggest some language to clarify that? Um, maybe like the implementation team would typically break down each user story into smaller stories. Um, uh, yeah, as, as, needed. Handle, as needed. As needed and handle one of those within a sprint. So I, I guess I would add another Category for remote accessible book by mail. I just said it among others. So my, yeah. my, yeah. I was, I was not trying to be inclusive because if we try to be inclusive, then then that list is going to. Well, I, I mean, I guess the only reason for, for putting it separately, you could you could put it in parentheses on one of these, yeah. but number it three involves could. different number software. Number three, number hardware. three doesn't do it. A registered voter voting remotely.
Well, it's a kind of disabled. No, but, but disabled also... is number four. Right. No, number three is what he's talking about. Number three. Oh, yeah, it doesn't say whether it's marked. How about this? What if it said a registered voter voting remotely, parentheses, e.g., remote accessible? Well, see, there are different things, like what you get. So remote accessible vote by mail is only allowed for people with disabilities or military and overseas voters. Mm -hmm. So the so point. A normal voter can't use this. See, I, I put the words among others there so that we wouldn't have to be, you know, precise and enumerate all the possibilities because that, you know, that gets away from pro project management and then into the, into the weeds. But I'm, you know, uh, if others would like to add yeah. more detail. Oh yeah, the only other thing I'd suggest was what I already did was yeah. to look at these stories for you know, the back end. Right, like it, this in fact, this uh, this specifically says voter activities, but you're, as you're saying, there's also other users, other components. Yeah, election, system, yeah. like, an election official is also. See, I was only trying to process. explain yeah. how what what the what the concept mm -hmm. of user stories sure. was about. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest, you know, to the point you just raised, I, I would suggest for each of the situations representing voter, comma. Department staff, comma, and other activities. Just so people know it's not limited to voter. And my, my only other suggestion is, so with, with voting centers, they're, they're called vote centers, but we don't know for sure that we're gonna have them. So I, I'm thinking maybe we could say either vote centers, you know, like parentheses, if we have vote centers, you know, one or, way to or say, another way to do it is to eliminate all of that list and just say one example is. I think these are good. Okay. Good. All right. I, I would just I would just say at a vote center or early voting station because we have early voting stations. Okay. That's right. We do. So that's my only other suggestion. Right. I think I think it's great. I like this language. Okay. Thank you. So, Carl, did, did you feel that we, you wanted to put in the remote accessible thing, or is it? Uh, uh, I mean, if it's just an ex example, yeah, it doesn't examples. matter if we're reviewing a project plan, that's a different yeah. thing. But I think that's sort of covered in our other requirements anyway. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. okay, so then we. So I'm good with, with your suggested changes. All right, so um, yeah, thank you, Tony, for preparing this. Are there, um, so let's do public comment on this item before we vote on anything. This is, this I is Tony's. I don't have any document in front of me. I would just be real careful about what you call the mode board in case some people might turn it in. It's an employee. I can't. The actual quote is a registered voter voting remotely and mailing in the marks ballots. So I hope that's your concern. Okay, so any last discussion before we vote? And this is on Tony's thing, yeah? Yeah, and that has to be discussed. <laughs> so where would this go? This would go under, well, we, we should talk about it. I would say it would probably best go under project management, and it can go It right. could go right after the item that says the department should align itself with other efforts within the city to use the agile procurement okay. and methods. So it kind of follows. So it would be the second bullet under that. So what I didn't touch on is the use of agile in government, mm -hmm. which was kind of another thing that we had kicked around. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should vote on this first and then we'll discuss the other. Okay. So. Okay, so then this is going to go as a second bullet under project management. Okay, so um, Secretary Chan? Um, I didn't hear the motion. Who? So I, I move we accept the language as with the changes discussed. 
and second. I'll second that. Okay. There we are. Okay. Um, all right. So, any discussion? Uh, remaining discussion on the motion? Okay. Seeing none, Secretary Chan. Chair Judanik. Yes. Uh, Member Haig. Yes. Member Katal. Yes. Member Washington. Yes. Uh, motion carries. <coughs> so, tell me your your thing. So, the um, you know the thing that we heard and we wanted to follow up on was the use of agile in government, and uh, we see it being used by Code for America. We see it being used. There's actually um, government Toronto um, or of Ontario rather it has one of the key people from 18F has gone to Toronto to. You know, work for the Ontario government where they're doing agile development for government and um, the United States Digital Service likewise. So we now have proofs of concept that agile development can be done. We don't have proof, I'm not aware of proofs of concept for agile procurement and I don't think that's an issue here. Is it? I mean, it's not an issue that needs to be solved, or it's not, it's not an issue that we need to address. I think it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not. Are, is anyone here aware of any You're agile? talking about being agile in the process of making RFPs? I don't know that there's an agile process for you know that, that's comparable to agile development. I don't know that it's one for agile. Procurement development. This is what you need Larry for. We did, we did talk. Were you here when Larry's guest spoke? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think I think it's. I would say it's. It might not be on the same level, but it's more agile than what's traditionally done. Right. But it's not like a week to week type thing. Yeah, because these other things, you go out on bid, and you have bidders' conferences, and you have, you know, traditional procurement. You. You have weeks, uh, if not months, of um, procurement. Mm -hmm. And um, as things stand now, that could take longer than the development, which is yeah. probably not what we want. Well, I mean, I know there are techniques, like one of the things she mentioned was you can have a vote in vendor pool, like you do an RFP at the beginning, and then once you select the pool, like throughout the project, you can parcel stuff out quickly without all the bureaucracy. Yep. So, but I think I think anything we can certainly add more guidance around this. Yeah, anything around agile, I think. Okay, so, and also it reminds me we 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 uh, we we're hoping to get some materials from Jesse too, which we haven't gotten yet. So I think we need to follow up. Yeah, but the uh, the other possibility would be to follow up with a couple of the people who were part of USDS, who are no longer there. Um, a couple of them are here in the Bay Area, and uh, we might be able to benefit from there. Uh, Would you like to try to reach out to them? I can. We'll see. Okay. Maybe we can do a similar type of uh, discussion with them. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, so anything else on this item? Okay, then let's move on. Item eight, equipment decisions and implementation plans. Discussion and possible action regarding implementation plans for open source voting, including open voting process and equipment decisions that need to be made. Okay, so for this item, we've got some language that Carl prepared. And this is also an item that I was gonna, I was gonna submit some changes that I didn't have time to make. And these were the changes that we had talked about, basically listing out the components. So actually I added, some of the things that we that I suggested at the last meeting. Oh, good. Good. Um, do you want me to kind of talk it through? Yes. Yeah. So if you go to the first document, uh, CH 181701, page four, um, sort of the middle of the page, you can see six and seven added with the plus. So do you know how to read divs? 
You yeah. know, we just, there's a little plus in the first column. Ballot batch management and that's audit the stuff support. That's yeah. added. And the minus is the stuff that it replaced. So uh, two things. One, I thought it was worth explicitly specifying audit support. So Colorado RLA repository is an example of that. So, but basically just whatever software you need, if you're doing an audit, either a precinct recount or a uh, RLA, then you need some, something to manage that whole process. So that's pretty much what I mean. And then I added another one here dealing with ballot batch management. And it's just kind of a fairly simple thing that we have to think through that anytime you have central scanning or you have audits, you know, the, how do you manage all the ballot collection and storage and the retrieval? And when you scan, you, you scan these batches of ballots. So one of the section of components needs to figure out how that's organized and whatever support. You know, it might include things like uh, printing labels for the boxes to be stored so you can classify them by precinct or early voting or mail, mail voting. Um, the other thing, maybe you might have cover pages. So you put at the beginning and the end of your stack of ballots. So the first thing in the ballot box might be a cover page and the last thing in the ballot box is a cover page. So when you do a scan, it, you can see that, it'll see what it is, marks the whole thing, you know you've got the whole thing. Um, things like that, that's, that's pretty much what I, I mean. And, and so then I give some descriptions there. Um, the other notes I made um, was, uh, well, one, one comment on ballot picture interpreter. It could also be used by people with disabilities voting at home. <coughs> but, um, if, if, that, if they could install that software on their computer, they could read you know, whatever it was they're sending in, or if their wife marks it, you know, he could read to make sure it's marked. Um, oh, I also added a section here that we, when we produce results, we should also produce a computer readable version. So, um, and I also n just noted how the statement of votes, there's a particular set of things that they have. Yeah. So, so I, I have one, one <coughs> comment <coughs> question, and that's the use of the word computer. Okay. Because more and more people are using things that you know, have evolved from one's traditional concept of a computer. I mean, obviously, a, a mobile device is, is a computer. I mean, at, at its heart, it's got you know, a computer chip, CPU, memory, storage, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but you know, it would be nice to find uh, you know, maybe computing device, which kind of. Okay, I know I used the word computer readable. Yeah, but in. in uh, what where it says it? the visually impaired no. can use a ballot picture text, interpreter on no. their computer. Sorry. Their home computer or their own computer? No, online, f no, yeah, on page the, four. And where it says their computer. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. On oh, their computer. Yeah. So yeah. on their computing device. Oh, I see. So maybe. So, I mean, you uh, know, they may. Yeah, that's, it's good to maybe, although. Like a phone is not a computer? Well, I don't you know. It, it depends on who you're talking to. I mean, in this room, obviously, we understand that. Well, it depends if their phone's connected to their printer, because they still have to print something. So, but it may, it, they may use so, Bluetooth, and they may use any so, of a number. Yeah. Because, because I, we I have. I know some phones now to print. To, to, oh, know, yeah, my phone, my phone can print. Yeah, and, and uh, Canon, I think, pro uh, provides software that runs on my mobile, my Android phone. And it'll print on, you know, you give it, it takes an IP address of some printer somewhere. So know. I could uh, change this word to device or? Computing device or, de or just device, yeah. Maybe device is better. And mm -hmm. that would be less confusing. Yeah. That yeah. people think they have to have a PC running Windows or whatever. Right. And, and, but, you know, this is going to come back in a different way, too, which is when 
when the software gets built, what platforms are, are is the city going to ask them to support in terms of where, you know, uh, supporting these, these various... So you're gen in general, you're suggesting that in places where, where we use computer, we might want to consider using a more general term? Yeah. Maybe on a case-by-case -case basis we can do that. Yeah, and, and, and if... But I could look through what I've edited and, and see if there's other uh, cases. Yeah, I mean, obviously a find and replace but, algorithm... But certainly, yes, well. I mean, to me, this is a computer. Yeah, But right, exactly. to other people, it's not, so... Right, exactly. So, um, so I think that we need to consider the direction of, that the, uh, uh, the world is moving. Uh, and, you know, it's particularly with younger people, I mean... Uh, many of them don't find it necessary to have anything that looks like a tradi traditional desktop or laptop machine. Yeah, this could also be addressed partially through the glossary too, the wood terms we use. Yeah, that's good. We should put that in the glossary as well, just to make sure that that's... So one other thing that I added um, for the picture scanning was uh, it should be able to identify the, the base printing and watermark, take it out so that any other marks that exist can be identified. So if people, like OpenCount does that, for example. So people check an X next to the name and instead yeah. of filling in the dot, yeah. then I, the yeah. software knows that that you know, was a mistake. But I have a really nice application on here that, uh, what am I trying to do, uh, that, uh, you know, takes a picture of your thing and, you know, scans it, mm -hmm. right? And so, the, you know, it's no longer a physical piece of paper. It's right. scanned in here mm -hmm. and completely manageable as you would any PDF or you know, image. So, so, so anyway, one of the other things that the ballot picture interpreter needs to do is output ambiguous or extraneous marks. So those are, and basically highlight <coughs> records or, or ballots that need some adjudication. Um, oh, in terms of input to the, um, you had the ballot, uh, what do you call it, analyzer? Ballot layout analyzer. I just uh, qualified images as being either an image or a PDF. And then I added the new sections that are just a proposed description and of uh, ballot batch management and audit support. The one, the one thing that occurred, I like the idea of having separate audit and, and um, batch management components. One thing that I, I think might be a little bit tricky is figuring out like the interface between these components with the rest of the system because it's like what does an auditing system have to know about to be able to function or what is oh, the I kind of tried to put some of that in there. Like in terms yeah. of its inputs and outputs and dependencies. Yeah, I but I mean but I guess more because for each of those it I, I feel like it is going to be kind of hard to separate. Like an auditor kind of has to know about it. It seems like it has to kind of know about everything, right? Uh, if you're doing an audit, you need certain specific things. Like you need your totals. If you're, if you're doing an RLA, you need um, cast vote records that you're going against. And then you need to know about how your batches are organized because yeah, I mean, yeah, when you pull things, so but, I mean, I think the inputs and outputs are reasonably definable. Yeah, I just, I mean, I think and, that... But, but if you don't have ballot batch management, then you get in trouble because now you don't have well-defined... I mean, there's missing pieces like how are your ballots organized. And if you're scanning things, how do you organize what it is you're scanning? I, I'm just saying that I just think I could see that from a project management perspective, it's going to be hard to... Describe. I could see it being hard for the city to describe some of this stuff. You know, like separate, like a batch management software separate from 
Well, it isn't really separate. I mean, but same thing with central ballot scanning. You know, uh, yeah. it, it's all it's all integrated. Yeah, I think it's. it's but the, the reason I sort of put it in is so so the input outputs and dependencies can can be documented. Yeah, so Carl submitted this stuff. He submitted it just 24 hours before the meeting, and I, I kind of had a chance to read most of it right now. But, um, I mean, if you, if you want to take right. some more time to uh, read it over and make suggestions, it's, it's I, fine. I haven't yeah. seen anything that jumps out at me as like wrong or something. I, I think I would be comfortable. Or, we can, or you yeah. can approve it and then propose a change for anything that you notice. No, I, 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 uh, uh, two quick things. Are we talking about like the larger amounts of text that you that you wrote about ballot box management yeah. and audit support? Okay. Yeah. So, Do you have um, any suggestions? in the first line of the description of audit support on page seven, mm -hmm. the word manages is misspelled. Okay. Um, and I also oh, have some mangles, huh? Uh, manages, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, don't, don't you love all these automatic spelling corrections? <laughs> But uh, I also have a subset of question, which is um, then you say audit support software can include the following, and you begin a list. The first item in this list is save or, random, save or generate random number seeds or precinct selections. Um, I think it might be worth pointing out that in practical applications that we see of audit systems that are already in place, like the audit that Colorado did in December uh, of 2017, um, the input to this is, uh, is often like dice rolls and stuff like that. But then these. So that's a seed to a, a, yeah. a random number generator that's part of the open algorithm. Probably, yeah. Yeah. That's why I said save. Right, OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, maybe no, I could, I, maybe it's just uh, weird and I should rewrite it. I, I mean, I, I, I do get that from it, but I think it might be worth calling out more explicitly that, like, you know, people using sort of manual ways like dice to generate randomness, that that, that is something that should be supported. Because what they did in Colorado was like they webcast like the throwing of right. the dice so that everyone. So could I've see also it. thought you could use the, you could download the, New York Stock Exchange, you know, right. price and volume for that day, mm -hmm. which is a public record. Take an MD5 sum of it, <laughs> right, and then yeah. that's your seed. Could I could I say this <coughs> language? What if I read, um, save, manually generated random number seeds. To mm -hmm. generate precinct sele selections. Okay, and I can say in parentheses dice roll. Yeah. Just to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, manually generated seeds, <coughs> a random number generator seed. Mm -hmm. Random number seed. Yeah, I think or random precinct seed selections if you're doing a precinct re recount. Oh, you're you saying just like put in manual selections as well? Well, sometimes they roll dice to Select find the precinct seat. number. Right. Well, that's what they do now. That's what they do here, yeah. So the, the phrase, the, what I said was, save manually generated random seeds. Well, is it more than one seed needed? Uh, well, random number of seeds. I mean, just okay, seeds, it's, it, you're speaking seeds, in a generic. Or, so you know what, what I should say is precincts. manually randomly selected precincts or RLA random number seeds. Arg. I mean, I could say that. But you, you're so right usually you either, you either, you know, ran, roll dice to select precincts, or you randomly get a seed for for an algorithm yeah. for okay. a list of numbers. Well, how about, okay then, can I, okay, what about if you save manually generated random input for precinct selection. And then that way it's general. I think, yeah, I don't know. I think random number seeds is fine. I mean, it'll be in the glossary. Yeah. Well, I mean, but his, his point is that- Precinct selection. Yeah, I understand that, but I, I think you're, you're, because you're generalizing away the word seed, I think that makes it less clear. Okay, that's fine. Or how, precinct or RLA ballot? Selection. So you have to say precinct or ballot selections. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. Okay. That's good. 
Oh, actually, the next sentence says for an RLA, it needs yeah, a, it, a, it, a it, so yeah. that's fine. Because you get use an RNG, but then, but yeah, then an RNG seed is something that you need to be able to get from right from a uh, dice cast or something like that, or public random or or know. other public random nothing up my sleeve way right. of getting the getting the seed. Yeah. So I actually like the idea of using you know uh, the stock exchange. No, well, or like using stock market price mm -hmm. and volumes. Because you can't fake that, mm -hmm. and you can fake dice rolls. Yes. Um, well, but, I yeah, mean, not it, very for, easily. It's well, I mean, one of the issues that um, that San Francisco had at one point with its one percent audit was that it was known before the polls closed, which, or at least known to some people before the polls closed, which precincts were going to be audited, which is not how. A good I thought you had to roll the dice before after the now you do. closed. Oh, now you do. They did it before. Something like that. No, it's still a problem. The California law. This was the law that was changed this year. Oh, you mean there was no law saying you have to make the choice after the election closes? Or well, there's the, po the polls closing and there's the election closing because vote by mail ballots can arrive late. Yeah. Uh, as long as they're postmarked in time. Well, no, the the law that was changed this year was that. No, if a ballot is counted after, after election day, you don't have to audit it at all. It, it just never gets out of it, yeah. So. Did they change that, or did they, what happened to that law? Yeah, San Diego wasn't doing it, so they got sued over it, and instead of actually, like, reforming their practices to be responsible, they lobbied Sacramento to change the law to legalize what they were doing. But did they actually change the law? Yeah. Oh, they passed it? I yes. Thought they, I thought they were not. There oh. was a lot of pressure to be okay. it, but it I had pressured it myself, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, so can someone can someone just state what the final language is for this random number seed stuff is? Save manually generated random input, e.g. dice roll for precinct or ballot selection. Okay, well that, that's, okay sure. That, what you that sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't like the fact that seed. It's is yeah, no, but it's it's okay. Okay. It's explicit enough for me. Okay. So In, you, input you, is. You have is, down there? Yeah, I wrote it. Okay. That's what I wrote down. Okay. okay. So there's also and there's a yeah, little point after that anyway that spells out that there's an RNG involved for things like uh, RLAs. Well, the, yeah, the whole RLA process is pretty pretty RNG driven, probably. Well, it's you need. well documented <coughs> as to what it what it means. So, <coughs> but uh, it's worth highlighting, you know, at this stage so that people on the project yeah. understand which things might be involved. Okay, so you were going, you were making some suggestions to do more. Uh, no, I think that was that was what I had. Um. So I also just in terms of trade-offs, things like uh, whether we have you know an imprinted ID, you know on the ballot, you may have to rely on, on an order of counts, or and if you if you can't match that, you may have to rescan. So mm -hmm. those are just things. Uh, Where is this written? On page That's top of page eight. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I added the interfaces and in inputs, inputs and outputs. So you, you mentioned election definition data. I was just wondering, is there a stand, you know, what we would think of as a standard header that's yes. used? What? That's used not just here but elsewhere in terms of or is this just? You mean standard data format or standard? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. Uh, here, I'm thinking that if the software that gets built here to handle our voting were you know, to be used elsewhere, then the idea that you would have you know, standard formats and headers and the like. So would, there's any. Mm, there's an old. There's several standards, and I'm oh. on the. Sta That's the great thing about standards. There are so many of them. Yes. <laughs> so there's EML, which is not really usable. Um, there, there's the Voter Information Project, which is pretty good, but missing a few things. There's and there, there's some emerging NIST standards that are kind of redoing the old EML, and they're kind of messed up. They're extremely complex, for one. And, so the answer basically and, and is now they're only focusing on election results. So they're missing 
really critical data and so it's the answer, too complex and then they're, they're worried about adding stuff that they need so they're kind so of messed up too. So the answer is no. Not quite, but the thing is that what's in those standards, there's like certain fields so you could come up with a, a mapping. something cl pretty yeah. close to what you need. Yeah. Okay, good. And you still, like, actually I included uh, one of the things as an example, the NIST standard for election results reporting. Okay. okay. Thank you. But I think here we just said election definition, meaning something that comes in from the EIMS. And so I just copied that from the other pieces that were there. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I have, I have just one more wording change suggestion here. Under on page five, about two fifths of the way down, I, I just it says the component must support ballots from third parties to support incremental rollouts like pilot hybrid rollouts, and it says or to support home printed remote accessible vote by mail. I think what you want to say there is as well as home printed. Yes, that's what it means. Or the so as but well as. Yeah, I, although I'm not sure. Do we? Are we? Do we want to like make that a requirement that the remote accessible vote by mail needs to be automatically scannable? Well, uh, well uh, one of the things I put in here, I'm not sure where it was that there's a state law requiring support for remote accessible by mail, starting okay. in 2020. For the central scanner. What? Do the central scanners need to be able to scan the remote vote by mail? Well, you got to support remote accessible vote by mail in 2020. So, well, no, it seems well, if it's if like, let's say like a half percent of all ballots. Oh, are, so you use company X and they provide the scanner? No, maybe, maybe you remake. That's what they do. Oh, yeah, or they remake it. I, I'm actually, I actually, well, I'm actually, betting that's what they're going to do. On today. the next section, uh, I think one of the questions that I included was that question. Mm -hmm. okay, so it's not a requirement, but it's a decision that needs to be made. It's, I would say it's going to be a huge requirements jump to be able to, to scan ballots printed by, you know, a place contacted by the city versus like a home printer that might have like misaligned right. stuff. So, so maybe people at home are going to print just something that's a PDF format or some something that doesn't involve, you know, the uh, variability of physical printers. Well, well, you still need to physically mail it to say. I mean, what mm. if the printer is slow on ink? You know what I'm saying? Right. What if the person's printing at home is low on ink? Yeah. What if they print out in blue because their black ink is gone and, yeah. you know, they don't want to spend. Oh, well, actually, you know, a, be before. a better way to my change my sentence would be and possibly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a better one. Yeah, that's where I was getting at. Okay. Because I think you, you said what, one of the requirements is that you support outside ballot types. But that's, uh, that's that would just be one type that, that would be used by some existing equipment. Yes. And so it makes sense that that's a requirement yeah, for it. Yeah. yeah. But so whether or not you cool. use it for remote. Uh, accessible vote by mail is another issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, was there anything? Um, so I know you have a separate, you have separate pages here. Is it? Are the other pages like distinct from what you just reviewed here? Uh, the other pages are section five point three point one key decisions. So I okay. took yeah, your. Separate. You had kind of. Yeah. Kind of a discussion. I, I kind of took what you had and broke it yeah. up into smaller pieces. Okay, so before we get to that, yeah. let's let's round out the discussion of this. Yes. The, so so now we're are there any other edits to um, like are people comfortable with what we've just reviewed regarding like the components that mm -hmm. okay. So let's let's take public comment on this item. Agent. Couple things. Um, one very briefly, you talked about the random selection of precincts. <coughs> Last year, the law was silent on when that had to take place. In 
So what what what, 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 what oh, sorry and what she found was they went back to Brown stuff. And in order to find that, she had to look at the the list of who signed in and count how many people who signed in at the precinct. And she found that in quite a number of places there were twenty one ballots that people signed in. And so there's this concept of auditing that's expanding in my head that may not be considered in scope here, but I'm just going to throw it out, that some of the data that we need is not just the votes, but who voted, who people voted. I don't know if I possibly get that, but I'm going to throw it out as an idea. So uh, just to... Let's, let's wait. Pardon, pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I just thought I was going to say that's part of uh, what I had in mind for ballot batch management is sort of dealing with that chain of custody and matching up the batches of scans, the boxes, the transport, yeah. all of that. So that's all, uh, that was kind of included in my description here. Uh, you know, not, not in that much detail, but uh, that's sort of the gist of that module or to to you deal with those is, issues, is, is right. voters sign in at the precinct. And that data is often not being considered part of the audit. Yeah. So I think, what, I think what Jim is saying, I think it's a good point that there, is, there are multiple types of audits you can do of an election. And the, one, the section that you wrote up is on a specific type of audit. But, right. but it's, it's titled in a general, just like right. that. So it might be worth qualifying so maybe, type of audit. You know, actually that's a good suggestion that as an input is the uh, counts of precinct voters that appeared, or uh, well, I'm not sure how I don't to know, I, I'm not sure, I don't think, rather than expanding the section to cover what Jim is suggesting, I think it, because I think that's another it's like a whole like unchartered territory, I feel like, in California, in the country. Oh, well, just I thought having, you're, you're reporting on your results the number of ballots cast, but then do you, should you also report on the number of voters that signed in, like you said? Well, I just, I feel like the issues are different and you probably want to, you don't necessarily want to have the same software be doing that. Yeah, I I'm guess it's sure it. What the boss says about that? Well, I just I'm just concerned about if don't require all of your auditing to go through a single software component. Right. And then I, I think I think what you're focusing on here is basically that the scanning is being done. Actually, what we're matching up there are the mm -hmm. statement of votes and uh, validating that with some sort of sample. Yeah, I mean, you're validating the paper ballots that are there are scanned correctly, whereas I think Jim was discussing, like, do you have all the paper ballots? Right, you know? and, and no more in this case. Right. Is that a good summary? We have a wall uh, in that area, so it's, 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 yeah, who voted, uh, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be free. Things. It's kind of like, it's like auditing the chain of custody, you're saying. Whereas, auditing the chain of custody is not being discussed in, yeah, so in, in, in circles in general, and, and, and start underlines that. I, I think it's I think it's it's like a more general issue than I think it should be covered by this section. Yeah. I think. I, I, we could add we could add it but it would be its own section. <coughs> by the way, it is also a point of interest among the lobby masters there is uh, 
uh, try to get a risk of being liability introduced into California. The language was written by Dr. Stark, and there seems to be interest from registrars and the Secretary of State's office for something, and so we're going to continue to push on that. I'll also point out, by the way, that one of the things that I learned from reading the worker manual is that when well, first, as you might be aware, there's multiple batches of ballots that come out of the polling place, and they're not necessarily ordered between them, because then when the bins for the scanner machines fill up, the, the, um, the bins are removed from the scanner and unloaded into a bag, uh, which might happen multiple times, and then the bag fills up, um, you close and seal the bag. Um, when a bag is sealed, which of course also happens to the last bag, which might not be full, uh, when a bag is sealed by the inspector, all the seals are numbered, uh, and the inspector has to write down which seal was used, which, which number of the, what the number was the seal that was used. Um, so you can also, use, in California at least, you can also use those records to um, ascertain. Yeah, exactly. You can audit those records to see that none of the bags, or I guess they get opened when you count them, but that, the, that when you open it, it has the seal number is what you expect it to be. So <coughs> can I suggest language for this? Yes. So what if, what if this section is called, instead of audit support, we say ballot tabulation audit support. Mm -hmm. And then at the, end of the, at the end of the description paragraph, we could say this component does not attempt a more general audit of the election, like auditing the chain of custody. Uh, what did you say again? Does not. This component does not. Or maybe you could say more general types of audits, like auditing the chain of custody, is, is outside the scope of this component. So you're saying it just audits whether the battle center. More general audits happens. like chain of custody? Yeah, like, a, like chain of custody audits. And then we could, in a future, we can discuss having more general. I'm not even sure. <coughs> okay, I, I, that's a good, good way to put that qualifier in. Okay. Okay. So, all right, are there any other edits? Do we have any motion on this yet? Uh, I don't think we do, yet. but I also move. Okay. I move to accept what it has. I'll second. All right. Um, any further discussion? Okay, Secretary Chan. <coughs> Chair Janai. Yes. Uh, Member Hay. Yes. Member Fatal. Yeah. Member Washington. Yes. Uh, it carried one zero. Okay. So now Carl has. One so more. just a note: I have to leave yeah. in twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I may have to. Okay. Shoot out. Um, but I they, haven't. I haven't. I have an edit and a remark for you. Okay. For the next thing. So this is the other, we, other stable document. Can I just ask, do we want to try to, to do this now in 20 minutes, or do we, do we want to like just discuss and plan on voting on it at the next meeting? What, what do we want to do? I, I've read it, so I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to accept it okay. with a small edit and a remark. Okay, why don't you introduce oh, sorry, it? I haven't read it yet. Why don't you introduce it? Okay, so... Uh, just in general, um, one of the things I took the key decisions and tried to break it up into uh, like a s set of individual questions with pros and cons. Um, so I tried to, I deleted a couple of your uh, blocks, Chris, um, and tried to cover everything that you put in it, um, but kind of separated it out into in, you know, more individual choices. Uh, and then I added a few other, just more detailed choices. Um, so, I don't know, maybe you could read the headings just to see, you know, what questions I'm asking. Um, and maybe you might even have some other choices. Could you read, choices? read the headings? Yeah. So, um, just very quickly, uh, I have to explain each one. Just so, f unfortunately, the diff came out a little weird, uh, okay. like with, with because I inserted a bunch of assumptions at the beginning, just to talk about these key decisions, 
you know, are made under these assumptions. And so there's some minus things that got messed up here because uh, it didn't match. Um, but it just deals with the kinds of voting that we have to deal with. Um, okay, so, so the first section is, will vote centers be used for early or election day voting? Um, and uh, so I just kind of separated that out as, as a single question with some discussion. So unfortunately, there's all these minuses that got. Well, we'll just read the headers. Just read oh, the okay. Headers. So the other one is. Uh, so page four. Should precinct four, yeah. Should precinct polling and vote centers use the same paper ballots as vote by mail? Um, should voting machines at a precinct or vote center be used by all voters or only voters with special needs? Uh, should hand-marked ballots be pre-printed or printed on demand? Uh, if vote centers at precincts use mail ballots for marking, should ballots be scanned centrally or at the precinct? Or vote center. Uh, oh yeah. Well, it's, do you use a precinct ballot scanner? In other words, uh, if a precinct scanner is used, does the scanner need to be integrated with the ballot collection bin? So I had a remark on that. Actually, um, the the machines that we currently use have multiple bins. Uh, I think they have two or maybe three. Well, but our machines, the scanner and the bin is one unit. Yeah. Or well, it bins because they. Yeah. I guess they... No, the, the reason there's uh, two bins is because when you insert a ballot that the machine doesn't understand, it tries to feed it back to you. But the, you either have the choice to spoil the ballot and get a new one from a poll worker, or you have to say, like, I don't care, put it's it in any way. Yeah. yeah, and then it goes into a separate outstack bin because the machine doesn't understand what it means. Yeah. And so those, those ballots have to be kept separate from the ones that the machine did already count. Right, so I didn't go into that level of mm -hmm. detail, but... Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to, I just wanted to point out there is not a bin, like there's, there's, there can be multiple bins. Right. Yeah, actually, I mean, since, since we're discussing things, on 5.3.1.3, should voting machines at a precinct or vote center be used by all voters or only voters? I would be careful about how that's phrased, because, mm -hmm. I mean, any, any voter can use whatever okay. machine they want. So I, I think what you want to say is, should, should there be intended to be used by all voters? No, or not even that. It's, it should. Should voters be required? Should all voters be required to use voting machine? Mm -hmm. Right. Should there be the only option, or should there be a paper ballot option? Yeah, or maybe maybe that's a better way to phrase it. Should, should all voters should, at a precinct I, I, be required to maybe use? the reverse. Should should voters be allowed to mark a ballot by hand? Should hand marked ballots be permitted? I think it's. Um, yeah, let's do public comment right now. So. The vote center rule will say everybody gets a vote by mail ballots. I'm pretty sure you need to vote by mail ballot at the end of it. And so that's a hand marked ballot being processed at the precincts where the votes are. Right. So, well, they. The issue is, do you... Well, let's, let's wait for Sorry. to finish. <coughs> okay, you're done. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. so, okay. so the, the question is, do you use mail ballots for the mainstream, hand-marked ballots for the mainstream, or do you use, and then, and, so do you use hand-marked for the mainstream, and machines just for the, spe you know, mm -hmm. the special needs voters, or, do you not have handmarked ballots and everyone uses machines? I'll, I'll point out that when vote, you can, you're already allowed to take a vote by mail ballot and bring it to a precinct. Um, when you do that, it is not run through the scanner at the precinct. It goes into a separate box um, and it's uh, later counted at the same place where other vote by mail boxes are counted. So that doesn't affect this directly. Like a, a vote by mail ballot dropped off at a precinct or vote center just 
makes its way to the central kind of location for vote by mail ballots and gets counted there. Yeah, well this this five point three point point three is not does not have to do with vote by mail. This is yeah, no, no no I'm just just in response to Jim's point. Okay. Um, so the general idea is to use yeah, voting no, machines yeah. or in the mainstream. I think we, maybe the way to say this is should precinct voters be permitted to vote without using a machine? Right. That, that doesn't have anything to do with people with disabilities or accessibility. It's are voters allowed to mark a ballot without using a machine? I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good. I think it's fundamentally the same question, right? Like that Carl wanted to ask, which is yeah, is, the, is the mainstream hand marked or is it? Well, do you use a voting machine? Do you use an electronic vote, you know, marking device? Right. I mean, the thing is, a voter's always going to have the option to do it. Well, the, the, the issue is, what, what's, what do most people do? I mean, you could say, should they be required to? Well, maybe the, they'll be allowed to be given a you know, mail ballot, and they can mark it if they don't want to use a machine. But. Well, but then, but then it's not required, I think. No, but, but I, they I think, still might have voting machines. And it's, I think um, Carl's point is that what he wants to express is what is sort of the mainstream experience. What is the thing that most people at the precinct are going to do? But I, but the thing is, I don't think I, it's really it's the voters' choice is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's like we can't. Sure, but as as it stands, like precinct operations are optimized for most voters hand marking a quote unquote normal ballot, right? Like that is the default path. Like, like I could use and the. Accessible yeah, you, machine. you don't have I to have a justification to. for using the machine intended for accessibility if you if you want to. You don't have to explain yourself, but you do have to ask for it. And the way that the precinct is run um, assumes that like you know most people are going to take one path. Well, not necessarily. I mean, the, the elections commission passed a resolution this year, basically mandating that not mandating, but um, encouraging the department to instruct poll workers to to offer the use of the accessible machine to all voters. Okay. So so I I don't still not what the question is. I'm just this yeah, is really right. to okay. point wrong. Right. So you're you're saying that this concept of a default path is kind of being discouraged from existence? Yes. I don't Yeah, but I don't think it's a default path. The, the the issue is what do most vote do the majority of voters but see but the thing is what if what if there's what if this, if it's fifty fifty? I mean, we don't, I, I think really it's what options are you presenting voters and then they can choose is a better way to be looking at it. I don't think we should, there should necessarily be like the preferred path or the one we're funneling people towards, you know what I mean? Well, I'm, one, one option is uh, really you it's, can only do electronic machines. Yeah, I mean, the question here is, are we, it is one of the options to hand mark a paper ballot? That's, that's equivalent to what you're saying, right? Almost, yeah. It's the opposite of that. I yes. I, I think... Yeah, I think I see where you're going. Like, I, I was trying to argue, I was trying to say, like, you know, a, a default path is an observation from current practice, but it also sounds like the commission is trying to change the current practice to something where really just every voter can choose yeah. out of all the options. Otherwise, it's them. a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy kind of. Well, I mean, right now, that's how it is, yeah. Well, it also changes things like ballot on demand. So you, you might have a ballot on demand system that prints, you know, hand-marked mm -hmm. ballot. Or, but if you have voting machines, then you right. you enter your choices on the machine and it, it prints out mm -hmm. legally a, not a ballot, but a yeah. paper cast vote record. So, but if you if it prints paper cast vote records, then you don't need to print mail. You don't need to stop or print mail ballots. Yes. Yeah, you so mean at the polling place? At the polling place. But then you're or not you're not allowing. So then the, the the answer to the to Chris's question is in that situation you would not be allowing people to mark a ballot. Oh well, okay. I guess they still might have to stop some mail ballots because people come in to drop off their mail ballot and they want a replacement. Yeah, well, so, and the other, my well, other... Well, the, the way that works now is that you cancel it and then have them go through the normal um, flow. So right now, for example, you can show up with a mail ballot, 
say you want to invalidate it and then go off and use the accessible machine. Oh, that's right. They, so they, like when you they, show up they, with a mail ballot to cancel, they, you just become a normal voter. Right. And you can they, go they through any path. So you can't yeah. submit it. Yeah, so they take your envelope, they write cancel on it, they put it in a box, and then right. you just become a normal voter that. and go through a normal process. I mean, and this, this is actually related to the next comment on, on 5.3.1.4. Like, I, I think there's an assumption in this question that, that you know, if voters have precincts use mail ballots for marking, should ballots, like, the assumption is that they're even allowed to do that. Like for example, today. Well, hence well if, yes, of course, that's dependent on the other, other question. <coughs> so, well, in other words, that's why I said if. No, but but if a voter uses at a precinct uses a mail ballot for marking, they would not be a voter at a precinct. Oh, uh, like okay. So, so I should say hand mark. Well, so one thing maybe I should change because it may be confusing, because I, think I used interchangeably the word mail ballot, meaning a type of ballot that, that mail ballot okay. voters would use, the paper, versus mm -hmm. the process of mailing it in. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should use a better term than mail ballot. Yeah, I, th I think his idea was if, the quote, if one of the experiences is a ballot marking device, for example, and you offer people to hand mark a ballot if they really want to, you might just have a small stack of vote by mail style ballots so, available for that. Are you, so he's, is one of the consequences that, or the assumptions that if you're gonna hand mark a ballot, it's, just, it's gonna be the same as the vote by mail ballot? So that's what he was saying, if, if, that's, if that's the case, right? If, if the hand mark ballot option is the same as a vote by mail ballot, just, you know, you just pick one off a stack instead of getting it mailed to your house. Then. So I mean I don't know anyone who has a, where there's a difference. What well, did you did you just make the point that were, how San Francisco there is a difference? I don't actually know there what the mail ballots look like no in San Francisco. Well, no, well, so this is important. Like in San Francisco, the the precinct scanner, the paper ballots that people vote in the precincts are different from the paper ballots. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're actually like a different size. I think. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know, oh. I've never seen a VBM ballot, so I don't know. Oh, so I guess the Santa Clara ones are identical. Yeah, because in fact, I think, I'm pretty sure that like the precinct scanner jams if you try to put a vote by mail ballot. Well, I know that vote by mail ballots are all folded up and, uh, but I, actually I don't know what San Francisco uses for their precinct. But I, I think I should change the word mail ballot to hand marked mm -hmm. uh, ballot in, in a few places here. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I mean, you've got, you've got nine pages here and we've got five minutes left. Right. I don't think it's just. So I, think just should, make, I, I guess it just makes a general. Take the feedback that yes. you have tonight yeah. and yeah. yeah. So, so do you want to read to any other headings? I, so I this, uh, the, the other area that you know, again, is is uh, the scanning technology, uh, because again, this is changing very rapidly in the world. I have this little app on here called Photo Scan, and I take pictures of the four corners of the document, and it produces a really nice image, which could then be transmitted to anywhere or printed or what have you. Um, and I don't know that we have envisioned that evolution of the scanner technology from the traditional flat plate? Um, actually, mostly there now. There's a difference between flatbed scanner and, uh, I'm not sure what they call them, usually sheet feed, mm -hmm. but that's sort of different. Yeah, which you have in the all-in-one printers, yeah. We're, yeah. But, uh, I mean, uh, like clear, What's it called? Clear channel? Ballot. Ballot. They, they sell um, a software system, software, it kind of what we're proposing is this, but it's just closed source software yeah. using COTS hardware. So you can buy whichever, you could buy like several different brands of but I, But I also have a thing that looks like a baton and I can do that over a document and it'll scan it. Right. So uh, you could use those in a, 
precinct, maybe, but. So, so all I'm saying is, is that we have to kind of imagine possibilities beyond what's been around. So the I mean, I don't think it changed the equation that much. Because I don't think it changed. It's just a Isn't matter it, of headings or terminology here. You can point to where it was. Well, I was, I was thinking about uh, on page seven, you know, scanner, imprinter, prose, and all the questions around 5.3.1.5 and 6. Like just name so one. actually, I know about, I did some research on uh, imprinters. Like, uh, they are available. Uh, but they usually only work with a few printers. So the imprinters cost about $600. Um, they only write like one little thing mm. and they attach onto another printer, which is usually $10,000. What is an imprinter? Uh, there's two things. There's an imprinter and uh, there's another word. The imprinter can print before you, s no, the imprinter no, is, is that just means something you it prints a mark on the ballot? Is it? it attaches to the the imprinter attaches to the scanner and it can print something okay. as it's being fed into the scanner. And there's one kind that does it before it goes in the scanner, and then the other one goes in at the end. And the other one's called an endorser, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. That's very useful. That's interesting. So, so they do make them, but. Uh, it's sort of non-standard and limited availability. Both of them are non-standard? Well, I'm just saying imprinters are, oh. are, you know, they're limited availability and they're only, I only found them available for pretty high-end machines. What if it's decoupled, like just a standalone printer that's separate from a scanner? That that's a printer. Well, no, where you, you feed in something that marks Oh, it's just, you call it a printer? That is a printer, yeah. Yeah, and then we have a long discussion and a subsequent question about printers, about inkjet printers oh, and that. laser printers. and It's a printer with a weird feed, printers. but yeah, it's, I agree, it's a printer. Well, it's a printer that can handle, like, ballot cards. Yeah, but is there a, is there a term like, for so something? Actually, I, most printers I, have, like, a, a feed paper from blank stock, like, built into the machine, right, where there's like a tray where you feed stuff in. This would be something that like a, a piece of paper passes through when it adds something to it. It's not Which I can imagine there being a jargon term for it because it's pretty different from what most people use printers for. Like it's not expecting it to be pristine stuff. Well, it's, well, not that, but it's also not expecting it to be like fed in bulk in a tray, right? It's, it's expecting it to be fed one by one, sort of semi-continuously through it, um, the way that the feed scanners work. Yeah. No. So have a good time at the ballet. Right. I think I have a ticket. Well, so if you stay around, I'll see you at the, <laughs> at the party house. Yeah, well, I don't know that we're welcome. <laughs> I have tickets for my family. Is a, actually, we are subscribers. But, I, but we don't subscribe at the level that gets us invited to the... Uh, to the opening. <coughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you, Carl. All right. Enjoy. Take care. Okay. So we're. Okay. So we're still on number eight. Um, yes. Yeah, so do we want to continue discussing this or, or move on? Um, I'd be happy to move on because I think there's enough text here submitted with short enough notice. Like I was able to read it, but most people probably. Yeah, I just. A chance. And yeah. it seems that some of the things were controversial as well, so I think it yeah. might be better to yeah. just leave this for next month. Yeah, and I think it's better to have uh, more people. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's move on to the next item. Oh, sure. Uh, um, history going back to 2006 uh, about the why California mostly votes on paper ballots. And this was, it was Alameda County that first said uh, in November 2006, you're going to the new change, you're going to New County, all the VPATs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the registrar said, no, I'm not. So they shoved them into the corners. 
Owen gets elected and next year she starts to write regulations. And regulations essentially say, you're gonna hand count all the new guys in an audit. So the registrar is just shoved up in the corner and somebody asked for it to get it. And she rewrote it, but essentially that's, that's what was going on. In the top to bottom review, the heart system is in San Mateo and Orange County didn't get as scathing a review. So that regulation did not go on the go with the heart systems. And they vote a lot on the voting machines in those two counties with the pass. And they don't like being counted. So that's where the whole that was coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that there it's, it's in the regulations for the specific machines, it's not in the law. What the practice should be in the future is but you're saying for the regulations for, is that all? Um, okay, is that all um, machines currently in use in California that have regulations attached to them that require? 90% California, over 90% goes okay. in paper ballots because of that history. Right, okay, but what I'm saying is in the counties that don't vote on paper ballots, for, for or let me rephrase, for all the machines that, for all the ballot marking machines that, that exist in California, is it the case that for all of them or only for some of them? The regulations require accounting to be passed. Um, the only ballot marking devices we have are ESMS. The touchscreen machines all come with be pads. Mm -hmm. Those made by hard to be pads do not have to be hand counted. Those made by Sequoia, which is here, and Diebold, uh, you have to hand count the mm -hmm. well, So some, but not all. So some, but not all then. I mean, these are, this only is in reference to the DREs that don't have a paper ballot, right? This is only if the machine doesn't have a paper ballot, right? Right, right. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Ballot marking devices is yeah. The only yeah, I misspoke, sorry. That is a ballot marking device. Obviously, whatever LA is coming up with is going to change again. Yeah, sorry, I, me I meant a DRE, not a BMD. Um, otherwise, of course, there is no VPAT it takes a ballot. Okay, so let's let's move on to the next item. Item nine, committee recommendations. Discussion and possible action regarding committee recommendations on the subjects of requirements, open source, software development processes, software architecture, and design, hardware, intellectual property, and testing. Okay, so um, I don't have any, I'm not prepared to talk about anything on this topic right now, but I, I think it would be worth us trying to get commitments to, to kind of flush more stuff out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I made some last month that I wasn't able to keep because of health reasons, so okay. uh, I, um, I will find those and um, do them. Okay. That sounds good. Well, we've made some of these recommendations are already, some of them in the document. Yes, well we've, we have a fair number of recommendations, but there's also a lot that we haven't discussed yet that I think would be important. Um, but yeah, I know, I know, like, for, I don't remember everything that we've talked about in the past, but I know, like, open hardware was something that we talked about. You know, the the Severon Secure Boot mm -hmm. and um, signing. Software was something that we had discussed. Oh yeah. Um, remember, like the, the stuff around having like a test harness for testing libraries. I'll write those things down just in case yeah. I didn't have them last time. But, but okay. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have to um, get too much more into it right now. But I, I think it would be worth trying to carve out some time bring something to the next meeting. Um, does anyone want to say anything about this before we uh, move on? Okay. Well, let me just ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of if we wanted to be more expansive about open source, I mean, we already talked about a preferred license and, and with that comes a whole lot of descriptive material about what, you know, 
how you can use the software and all that. Um, what else did you want to say? Do you, do you imagine that we would talk about making daily builds available or making, uh, I mean, at, at what, how, how far do we want to go in terms of these recommendations? Well, I think, I mean, anything that you think is useful, but I think I know just a couple things that are off the top of my head, like we haven't really discussed anything around like, what should the city do about the community around the software, you know, interacting with the public? Um, I think your idea about, like, yeah, what sorts of, um, yeah, like, builds and things to facilitate using and testing the software, um, like, stuff around IP is related to open source. But, um, I mean, and these are, like, in the grand scheme of things, these are kind of more basic things, so I think I think it's worth, you know. Bless you. But, um, I mean, you two could probably think of other stuff. Well, I mean, you can sort of go, you can write a textbook. I mean. <laughs> well, I would look at it from the perspective of, like, what do you think, you know, the information you think would be helpful for this project to succeed? Well, you know, we might have a discussion about builds, for example, because you don't violate the license if you keep your software private until the time that you're ready to release it and then make the source available concurrently. Um, that's not in violation of any open source license. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to... Uh, well, we, we were already telling them not to do that, right? We're telling them to develop it in the open. Yeah. Right. There's a clause in the recommendations. About right, that. right, which has its own um, constraints. Let's which say. are? Well, I mean that, that they're... <coughs> If they're, if they're developing it in the open, then they may have to be prepared to accept uh, submitted changes from the world at large, as opposed to, you know, merrily doing their own thing until such time as they're ready to release the source code and the product. So it does change their, pro whoever's building it, it does change their process. Well, I mean, it depends, right? The, the, the question of whether they should accept outside contributions during that development phase is separate from whether they should it, be it is, publishing and, that development phase. Right. But in terms of their bidding, you know, if they have to allocate somebody's time to mm -hmm. dealing with proposed submissions, right? If then, <clears throat> you know, that has an impact. I mean, at one extreme, they could just not look at them. Yeah. Right. Which is actually in in most cases what I would almost recommend they do because I mean unless they're like you know small helpful changes but like if someone goes out and builds a subsystem you just ignore them. Yeah. You what? You just ignore them in that case. I mean if you if you have a plan for how you're going to build the thing and you're being paid to do it and you're on a timeline and stuff like that, if if other people go and like build entire subsystems for you, you just ignore them. That's not because that's not helpful. Wait, why? Why would it not be? I mean, I, I'd say in most cases it's probably not helpful, but I could yeah. see. I mean, if what, if what they built is magically really great, then maybe. But y it's also going to be harder for you to go back and ask them later how, like, why things work the way they do. And um, for larger things, you're going to have to have more of a back and forth. Like, yeah, if someone fixes bugs on what you already made, great. But, yeah. like, if, they, if they're basically just, like, you know, trying to join the development team by submitting giant patches, then their patches might not be that helpful. And, and, but, and you also get into contributor agreement issues. Uh, you do, but you should have a strategy for that anyway for yeah. contrib contributions large or small. So you should, you, you should have that in place. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I mean, these are the types of things we could. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay, um, let's do public comment. Jim, do you have anything on this? Okay, um, and then I guess let's move on to the Next item. Item 10, topic for future discussion. Discussion and possible action regarding topic for future discussion. Okay, so um, some things I can think of are Solomon's report is going to be done mm -hmm. next Friday, I think is. is cool. Months. So that, are we going to have that in the agenda packet for the next meeting, I take it? Yeah, we could, we could have it. And we can we can discuss that. I think, I think we're going to want to... Um, 
I mean, this is the time when our work can influence the peace process. Mm -hmm. We're not waiting on the Psalms report. So um, we may want to have some sort of, uh, um, as a special focus, like any recommendations we'd have for like the city's budget process. We might want to have mm -hmm. that. When is, when is that going to no. start? Yeah. Like in February. Okay. But it's going to go on for a few months. Can, right. Uh, it's it's it going to be especially entertaining to have a mayoral election right then, so I can have in the middle of it this time, right? Well, I mean, it doesn't really affect us. I mean, well, no, I'm just saying that, like, for the budget process in general, the people running that process are not going to be amused at designing a major, major election. Well, no, so I, I actually think this could mean that more of the decision making is going to be happening by staff people, not involved. Right. That's possible because when they're d during part well, during one half of the budgeting process, you don't know if the mayor then is still going to be the mayor after for the second half of the process. Well, I think, well, technically, technically, I think the mayor transition happens after the budget will be signed. I think. When is the budget supposed to be finalized? Um, around, I think, around either June first or July first. Oh, interesting. When is when is it effective? The budget? Yeah. Um, around August 1st or something. Okay. That's, yeah. okay. And of course, <coughs> the interim mayor may be the same as the elected mayor. Yeah, and mayor may not, <coughs> but you don't know that until yeah. you know, but I, I think, finish. I think the bigger problem, <coughs> though, is that the interim mayor has not, does not have the same history of working on thinking about this issue. Yeah. So the interim mayor is going to be relying more on staff people for decisions. Right. Right. So. <coughs> So does it make sense for us to invite somebody from Slalom to uh, meet with us? Um, it, it could. I would need to check in on that because they might be, their contract might say they're done on the 26th, so they're not going to be doing like further speaking of things. But they mm -hmm. may in fact be uh, wanting a follow-on contract and, and perceive that it would be in their interest to uh, well, make, make friends with us. They can't get one under the terms of their first contract. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, but but maybe for free they could talk about their work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on yeah. whether they want to. But you're right there. Their contract might run out, and they might not. Yeah. That reminds me. Another thing that we talked about doing was having like some sort of a panel discussion involving some people, in, um, you know, from the digital services of San Francisco around procurement. Mm-hmm. This might be a good time for that if it's during the budget process. Yeah, 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 good point. So Do we know if Larry can make it next week or next month? I, well, I'll check. Mm -hmm. I'll check. He was, he was sick today, so. Oh, okay, so I guess that wasn't foreseeable. Yeah. Are we February 15th next time? 8th. 8th. Eighth. Eighth. February 8th. Second Tuesday now. Second, Second Tuesday. Thursday. I don't think I had that on my calendar. Uh, we discussed it before you uh, before you arrived. Ah. But, um, yeah, second Thursdays are going to be the default. No. Yeah. Second. All right. Oh yeah. Um, the commission meeting on the twenty-first. Yes, what he said. Uh, are you going to be able to attend that one and represent there? Which? What's the date? February, February twenty-one. Yeah, I week. think so. Yeah. So this is, okay, so we have to add to it, right? Open source voting. I'm also happy to go to that, by the way. How happy are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will actually be available this time. <laughs> um, and I'm I'll sorry, be available I for the resist meeting that. that. <laughs> Well, I guess if you're if you're going to be coming from Mountain View again, then it might be more practical for me. To on go. on Thursdays, well, you know, if the weather is crappy. Well, it still will be February, so assume so. Uh, I mean, I work two bar stops from here, so it's uh, it's no problem. And I, it sounds like most everybody else uh, lives far away. I live here. I live three bar stops away. Oh, no, but, but you work down in. 
you work down in uh, in the South Bay then? Yeah, and I have to go down there Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. So Wednesdays, yeah. Wednesdays you can actually do then. Wednesdays easy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So while you're thinking about that, um, let's do public comments. Jim, do you have any comments? No. no I so I do have a commitment on the 21st. So Rowan, if you want to do the 21st, I have the Carnegie Mellon 50th anniversary. Okay, yeah, I can event. do it then. I had it on my calendar. No, well, this is why I have calendars. This is where I needed a clone. Okay, so did, what, what was this? What did you settle? Uh, so so I'm going to do it because he can't make it. Okay. Okay, so in. March, then we have the 21st again, right? Yes. For the election commission. And the 8th again, right? That's correct. Got it. Okay, so I can definitely do March 21st. Great. March 8th, I can do, I'm going to the Southern California Linux Expo uh, early in the morning of the 9th, but I'm here on the 8th. Okay, sounds good. So anything else for future discussion? Seeing nothing else. The time is now 8.18 p.m. That concludes the meeting. Have a wonderful evening. So now my clone didn't get to go to the open source future of telecommunications event. Uh, oh, yes? Yeah? Is there a thing today? Happening as we speak. Yeah, I can send you an email.